Oh, hi. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I've got a confession to make. Uh, I'm a bit of a gearaholic. Yes, it's true. I've said it. So now that I've admitted that, uh, can I be impartial in a gear review? Well, I can because as much as I love gear, I love a good workflow even better. Now, those of you who follow my channel know that I'm well invested in these big DAW controllers. Now, these are designed specifically for music production, audio mixing and recording. Now, while this is a music production channel, it's really a video experience, right? Because it takes all the, the video production to bring this channel to you. Now, I've tried to adapt these to my video editing software, but they're just not designed to do that. The protocols in place are designed to work with different DAWs and they're not uh, architected to work with editing software. So there's a whole other side to the studio and that's really the video production side. I'm doing video editing, I'm doing graphics, and I wanted to introduce something into my workflow that could help me sort of streamline that process. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, so that led me to the discovery of the Loop Deck Live, which I've got right here. I want to see how well this integrates into the whole experience here, uh, jumping between different pieces of software and even maybe even enhancing the music production side of the experience here in my studio. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. I'm the Lonely Rocker. This is I Don't Have a Band and welcome to my home studio. Cue the intro. So I field a lot of questions on this channel on the various topics that I cover in all my videos here, but there's two topics that sort of stand out for me. Uh, number one, acoustic panels. Uh, I see them around here, answer a ton of questions about those. But the other thing is DAW controllers. This is a music production channel and I, and I love my DAW controllers as you see here on my desk. But one thing I notice with a lot of these questions is people seem to dwell on the negative, you know, the, the things that these controllers can't do. And I'm not really sure why that is. I mean, I guess in, in the software world, I mean, we're only limited by our magic I mean, with the click of a mouse, we can scale mountains and we can fly airplanes. But when you bring that functionality to the desktop, you know, we're limited by the physical properties of any device. Now, it comes to the question, Loop Deck Live, what is it? Now, at its core, much like a mouse, much like a keyboard, much like a DAW controller, it's an input device. It connects to the computer via USB or USB-C, and it provides some physical buttons or dials to communicate with a piece of software. Now, the DAW controllers here are designed to work with music production software and they're made to look like mixing boards because the users of that software they want that form factor. They want to feel like they're working on a mixing board. But the truth is you can make that thing look like a beach ball and put a bunch of knobs around it and just program it to communicate with the software and it will do the same thing. It's really just a complicated mouse. And Loop Deck Live is much the same thing. Where these two are different is the Loop Deck obviously in a smaller form factor, but it combines a touch screen which is divided up into a series of virtual buttons and it's also got some physical dials and buttons on the unit. And it's a fully programmable device and it's not just designed to work with a, one particular kind of software. It can work with music production software. Well, that'll make it a DAW controller. Uh, it can work with uh, video editing software. Well, that makes it an edit controller. But it can also work with Photoshop and you know different graphic programs and things like that. So it becomes a universal controller that can work with many different kinds of software. Uh, there's certain applications that are sort of baked in. There's you know full templates that were developed by Loop Deck with you know full graphical buttons here on the screen, and they're just full integration and they work really really well. And then there's sort of that secondary tier. Uh, these are applications that maybe are they consider less popular, at least for their user base. So perhaps user uh, generated profiles started to surface while well, they make those available for free on their website. Uh, the video editing software I use is Avid Media Composer. And then that's a, a broadcast professional editing application. I do have many years in production and that's just what I've always used. But if you're using Premiere or Final Cut Pro, uh, they have a full integration uh, right out of the box. Uh, Avid is a, is a user profile or a custom profile and that's something that can be customized. Now the third tier of that are applications that just haven't been considered by Loop Deck, but because it is a fully customizable device, you can build your own profiles from scratch. But ultimately, the Loop Deck Live is what you want it to be because it can work with all kinds of different software and really at the same time. 
Now, one of the challenges when watching review videos, and certainly that applies to mine, is that a reviewer is going to base their opinion on a product on a couple of different levels. I mean, it's easy to say something is good or great, but what I think a reviewer really should do, what I'm going to try and do with this review, is I'm going to talked about what I identified as a challenge that I had here in my studio. Uh, I found Loop Deck through a series of videos on social media and I admittedly I reached out to Loop Deck and said I'd be interested in reviewing their products and they were gracious in sending this to me. They're not paying me for this review so my opinion is my own. But I identified that product as something I thought would actually be very useful here in the studio. But for you when you're looking to assess or evaluate a piece of equipment you have to start with identifying what your challenges are, right? Because if you're sort of new to setting up a studio, you know if you're a music studio like mine or you aspire to building one or you got a video editing studio and you're looking to add your first couple pieces of hardware, sometimes the expectations are too high because we think we're going to get like a cool digital device like this and it's just going to, it's going to make our breakfast for us and it's going to do everything. And I think that's the wrong attitude. I think you have to identify what it is that you want to do. I did a whole video on the dock controllers and I talked about expectations because a lot of people are disappointed because they think it's going to do more than it does when in fact it's a wonderful device that does so much. So for me, one of the challenges that I had, as I do have a growing studio here, and there's certainly no shortage of equipment, is that I do move around the studio a lot. Now the dock controller is a big device that sits on the desk, and it's kind of immovable. I mean, yeah, you can move it, but it's set up. I've got my ergonomics the way I want it, and I want it to stay there. But I've got an amplifier set up here. Uh, this is connected uh, directly th uh, through my interface into my computer, and I'm often laying down my guitar tracks from here. Now my controller is all the way over there, and yes, I could reach over, and I did scratch my guitar once trying to do that. But what I love about the Loop Deck Live, the fact that it's fully programmable, I didn't need something with 100 pages. I mean, there's about seven or eight different pages you can program with custom instructions. But what I did is I set it sort of a transport control uh, setup here. So I've got my record and play. I can set up my, my cycle loop, uh, record enable. I can turn on my input monitoring. I can mute. I can solo. I can turn on the count in and the metronome. So these are sort of the basic functions that I use when I'm laying down my tracks. Because when I'm sitting at my desk and my amplifier is all the way over here, here and I'm sort of you know fumbling with my mouse and my keyboard and then I got to come over here and adjust things on my amp or adjust my levels on my interface. So that was an issue that I had. So looking at the Loop Deck Live, it brought those functions that I need to a very convenient part here in my setup. Now when I'm sitting at my desk, I can just put it up there. I can very easily move it here. And like I said, I can hit record, I can lay down my tracks, I can stop, I can review, I can play. And it's extended that control uh, and added convenience for me when laying down my tracks. I just thought it would be a great opportunity to bring out some of those functions into an area where I feel more comfortable freeing me up to do what I'm really trying to do. And that's lay down some really great guitar tracks. While I was giving some thought to this video and what I wanted to talk about, I actually had a great chat with my good friend Mike at Creative Sauce. I'm sure many of you know his uh, YouTube channel. Uh, for some reason, if you haven't, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, definitely check him out. He reminded me that the, the Loop Deck actually supports MIDI. Now, he's got the Loop Deck CT, which he's in the early stages of planning of uh, his own video. And so we got to talking about the device and he said, Dan, don't gloss over the MIDI support uh, for this device. I mean, that's a whole nother level or, of things that you can do with the device. Now I thought about it and I did sit down and took and started taking a look at the MIDI mapping. Now MIDI is something that's sort of kind of behind the scenes in what I do. I mean, I'm predominantly a guitar player and a bass player and I write very traditional, you know, rock uh, oriented music. But uh, I mean, I do use MIDI. The dock controllers utilize MIDI for their control. I do have, you know, keyboard controllers and things like that. But I don't think in terms of MIDI that often in terms of the music that I'm creating. So it's more of an assistant there, but it's not really in the forefront. So back to what I said earlier is that, you know, assessing a piece of gear, you have to determine is, you know, what are your challenges and what are the things you want to improve. So really the MIDI workflow wasn't something that I gave much thought to, so I decided not to dive too deep into it. Uh, but thanks to Mike, I do want to mention that because that is a pretty amazing feature. Uh, the fact that the Loop Deck Live will support MIDI, so definitely if that's something that you are interested in, you should know that that does exist. Now transitioning over to the picture side of the studio, I mean, I'll sit here sometimes eight to ten hours. You guys out there who do video editing, you'll know what I mean. Uh, we can be locked in that one position for many hours, you know, editing our videos. And uh, as someone who's worked in production for uh, well over 20 years, uh, I did start to develop some back issues and wrist issues, just, you know, the repetitive motion in, uh, injuries, just from sitting there all the time with your hands on a mouse. 
And that was one of my first uh, interests in introducing different types of controllers into my studio, just to sort of free me up from that static uh, workflow sitting in the same position. I mean, I do try to get up as often as I can. If any of you that uh, know Avid Media Composer, it is a more professional broadcast uh, grade editing uh, system. But back even in the early days when they used to ship with these really colorful keyboards with the keyboard already pre-mapped. And I remember editors are very particular about their workflow, uh, but they would map the F keys and they'd put tape on the top and then that was their keyboard. And, but here, if I'm using Avid and then I'm jumping over to Logic Pro and then I'm using Photoshop and some of the other applications I'm doing, if I've got this crazy keyboard that's pre-mapped for one piece of software, it doesn't really help me in other applications. As I mentioned earlier, the Loop Deck Live is completely programmable. Um, you know, whether you're using one of the baked-in applications with these colorful graphics or on the buttons, and it looks really good, that real visual connection to the software. But if you're creating your own um, templates, you can actually create graphics and give a good visual representation of the functions that you want. What I do in my Avid editing side that I've taken sort of the, the main functions that I use, you know, a lot that just sort of evolves maybe too much hand movement. So now when I'm sitting, I'm relaxed, I've got my hands on the mouse and then certain functions I can reach over and I can see right away what it is, which I think is making my editing and my workflow far more efficient and far more comfortable. But really the question comes down to, is this something that's truly enhancing my work experience here, improving my workflow, and is it something that I want to keep around? So I looked at it for a couple different things. Number one, I should discuss the build quality of the device itself. I mean, it's made of hard plastic, feels really solid. I love the feel of the, the dials here. You get a little click. Um, there's this sort of this uh, little vibration when, uh, when you click a button, so you do get a response from the touch screen, so you know something's actually happening. And uh, I love the customizable display and, and buttons and things like that. That's really, really great. And even the buttons here, it has a really good feel to it. Uh, if you're using applications that are sort of, like I said, baked in and, and come shipped with uh, the Loop Deck Live, you're, you're well ahead of the game. Uh, the integration is great. A lot of thought put into those uh, templates. Now, if you're sort of in secondary like me, um, one of the challenges I find there is these templates are not as thought through as sort of the main ones. And this is not really, you know, I'm not really slagging the device itself, but there's only so many applications they can support. Because uh, what I find in some of these uh, templates is that the buttons are just text. And when you're looking at it, and you're sitting there, maybe it's a, a couple feet in front of your face, it's just a, a, a word jumble on here, and I don't find that effective at all. So in that case, uh, you're gonna need to do a little bit of work to customize the template for yourself. Uh, what I've done, I've set up a Photoshop file with just a square ratio. I've created a bunch of icons, say PNG files, and I can load that into the software, uh, the Loop Deck software to customize my icons. So it's gonna require a little bit of work and even mapping sometimes. Some of it I found a little bit confusing, but I do wanna say, because I have tackled mapping on a few different devices and mapping universal controllers is kind of complicated because the relationship between the device and the software developer sometimes there's a relationship there and sometimes they're not it's like you got to get in through the front door or you got to sneak in through the back door or, or a side window right so obviously loop deck has uh, collaborated with some software developers and they've got full integration which is wonderful uh, secondary integration when you can customize your own templates and in some cases you're just uh, dealing with what's available. So that's not all on Loop Deck to, to do, but it's something you should know when you buy a controller and understand the type of integration that it has with the piece of software that you intend to use it for. So just something to know about it. Other than that, I really don't have anything negative to say about it. You know, the stand, I'd like wish it was adjustable. That's just a nitpick. But bottom line, I really enjoyed using the Loop Deck Live. I think it's a really great device. I, I'm certain we'll be seeing a lot more development on this device, especially the software that supports it. But right now, if you're using a piece of software that is completely baked in, I think you're gonna have a great experience using the Loop Deck. If you're like me and you don't mind tweaking and taking a little time to set up the right profile for you, keeping in mind you're gonna have a little bit of work to do, the end result is gonna be really, really positive as it was for me. So there you have it, to Loop Deck Live. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Have you tried it yourself? If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. I'm gonna put a link in the description so you can go get more information about Loop Deck Live. And if you do get your hands on one, just let me know. Well, if you're new to the channel, I hope I've earned a subscribe. I've got a ton of content on this channel. A lot of it revolving around this home studio geared to the home studio enthusiast and the home recording musician with videos to hopefully help make your home studio life better. So perhaps you'll just click that subscribe button and come along for the ride. If you really want to support this channel, I am on Patreon. Links to everything I've discussed and some things that I haven't are in the description below. And above all else, I hope I'll see you again in another video. As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And please like, subscribe, and ring that bell to stay up to date. Remember, you don't need a band to rock and roll. There are a lot of great musical projects you can do by yourself right from your own home. I hope to see you again next time.